Okay. Now let's switch gears here and let's talk about larger environments involving Cisco Unified Communications Manager and let's talk about components that can manipulate these particular call flows. We're going to talk about an unfortunate term, it's class of service. Now, I say it's an unfortunate term because this is not to be confused with layer two markings. Yeah, specifically, we like to call this type of class of service, we like to call it telephony COS. Yeah, see, we need to distinguish this between class of service at layer two. You see, let me, let me explain this layer two marking and then we'll, we'll ex, uh, expound upon telephony class of service here in this lesson. All right, but here's, here's what a voice over IP phone does. Okay, so just forgive my bad artwork, but this is our voice over IP phone. Okay, when the voice over IP phone communicates to, let's try that again. <laughs> when the voice over IP phone communicates to the local switch that it is plugged into, and then of course that switch sends the traffic to a router, the voice over IP phone needs to mark the traffic as voice traffic and it needs to mark it so that the switch understands it and the router understands it. So what the voice over IP phone does is at layer two, it marks it with a quality of service marking called class of service. At layer three, it marks it so the router can understand it with DSCP, a differentiated services code point marking. So don't confuse class of service that we're about to talk about now with these layer two class of service markings. All right. So telephony class of service. What is this all about? Well, it is allowing us to control who can call what. It might be a good idea to allow everybody to call 911, but it might not be a good idea to allow that really chatty guy down in accounting whose entire family lives in Australia. Probably not a good idea to allow him to make long distance phone calls to Australia. So that's what telephony class of service refers to it refers to restrictions, often restrictions against numbers that charge, like those <laughs> chat with a girlfriend phone numbers, right? It allows us to restrict against international calls like I described. But telephony class of service isn't just about restrictions. It gives us the ability to do kind of fancy stuff like route calls that are going to the same called number differently per user. Yeah, you might send one dialed number one way and one same dialed number a different way based on the user that made the call or put time of day variations in. Let's send the call this way during one time of the day and another way during another time of the day. So lots of different calling privileges 
can be enacted through what we talk, call telephony class of service. We could have a class called internal. They can call other people within the company. They can call 911. Anything else? Any personal calls? They might want to use their iPhone 5 or their Galaxy 3S. <laughs> Got to be fair to both crowds. Uh, they're in a local privilege class. They can call their peers within the organization. They can dial 911. Or they can make local public switch telephone network calls. They find themselves in the long distance class of service. They can do long distance PSTN in addition to local PSTN emergency and internal. And finally, the ultimate class. They can call every destination known to man. So notice, we want to plan, don't we? We want to plan for our class of service in telephony. It's going to be based on what? Yeah, like so much of the technology that we should implement today, it's going to be based on business needs. Yep, it's going to be based on business needs of the organization. And obviously, it's going to require careful thought and careful planning. Now, are you making flashcards that go along with this course? Yeah, you may be doing that. And we're about to hit a good, good area here for our flashcards. We're about to talk about the elements that can allow you to design a telephony class of service type environment. For instance, there's partitions. Partitions are how we group destination numbers that have similar reachability characteristics. Okay? So a partition is a grouping of destination numbers that are similarly reachable. A calling search space is a list of partitions that a particular device gets to access. Pretty cool. So we can have a bunch of different partitions and we group them into what are called calling search spaces. Then there's time schedules and time periods. Maybe we want only certain partitions to be reachable only during a certain time of the day. Another configuration element that we can utilize for class of service in our telephony environment is client matter codes. Client matter codes are used to track calls that go to certain numbers for the purposes of accounting and billing. Yeah, when we use a client matter code, the user picks up the phone and they have to enter a code in order to indicate that their call refers to some specific matter. Notice we assign these numbers to users of our phone system. So as an example, uh, we want to track that the sales department has made a call. So each of the salespersons in our organization has to enter a client matter code that we assign to sales. Notice that this is used for tracking purposes. This code isn't used for access restrictions, but tracking is what we're interested in. And typically that's for accounting and billing. Another option that we have for call privileges is forced authorization codes. These codes are actually used to restrict our outgoing calls 
to just specific numbers. So in order to call a specific number, the end user has to dial the forced authorization code. Maybe it's a code that we give that permits international dialing. And keep in mind that we might combine these forced authorization codes with our client matter codes, so we may have an end user that literally has to enter both. Let's elaborate on the partition a bit, shall we? Remember, a partition is that logical grouping of a destination dial pattern. So as an example, we might have all of our employee phones in a single partition. Yeah, and a source device can only reach destinations that are defined within its list of reachable partitions. So here you can see we have the employee phone partition, and it contains all of the employee phone numbers internal to our organization. Calls that come in from the public switch telephone network gateway are allowed, if we enable the feature, to be accessed thanks to the employee phone partition. Remember, the calling search space is that list of accessible partitions. Here we see the public switch telephone gateway has a calling search space that includes the employee phone partition, but not the manager phone partition. So as a result of this calling search space, yeah, you guessed it, trouble flows downhill, doesn't it? You got all these upset customers calling in from the public switch telephone network, Thanks to the calling search space containing the employee phone partition, they can make calls to us employees. They can't get through to the managers because that partition is not part of the calling search space. Now, what do you think happens? What do you think happens if entities do not have an assigned partition or they don't have an assigned calling search space. Well, interestingly enough, everything you create in the VoIP network are in a partition called none. And all things that you cre can create that can be assigned to a calling search space are in a calling search space it's called none. So, we have no partitions initially in your telephony environment. We have no calling search spaces by default. And this results in all calls are possible. So, it's a permissive structure by default. Now, Guess what? The order that you put your partitions in within a calling search space is critical. Okay? It's critical. So the order that we list the partitions in in the calling search space is going to be a critical component. Let me demonstrate how this works. Here we have a sample calling search space. This calling search space consists, as you can see, of two partitions. We have the Chicago partition, and we've got a phone in there at 3001. 
and we've got a San Jose partition with a phone of 3001. Ah. A user places the call to 3001, and the call manager, excuse me, the Cisco Unified Communications Manager, uses the number, the called number 3001, to do its call routing lookup. It finds a full match for two different entries. That longest pattern match unfortunately matches for two different entries, which is used the Chicago partition because it's first. List the partitions in the opposite order in the calling search space, and the San Jose phone is indeed utilized. Here you can see we have a line calling search space and a device calling search space. So the user dials 3001 in this case. What happens? Well, the two directory number entries in the call routing table are more specific than the route pattern. So the route pattern here is not a candidate for a routing decision. Notice there's 300X, and that's not as specific as the line calling search space of the Chicago partition and the device calling search space of the Atlanta partition. Those were exact matches of 3001. So now we have out of those two equally matched directory numbers, we're going to go ahead and use the Chicago partition because it is listed first. Yep. So those examples really teach us exactly how the partitions and the calling search spaces are going to work. So notice these calling search spaces really help us directly implement our telephony classes of service. Here you can see we have our call search spaces and our partitions being utilized to implement a telephony class of service in our organization. We've got the internal calls. We've got the local calls, the long distance calls, and the international calls. These are our different classes of service. The international calling search space is used to implement the international calls class of service. They have a partition and a calling search space that includes the international calls, the long distance calls, the local calls, and the internal calls. They get it all thanks to the calling search space of international. The long distance call search space includes the local partition, the local PSTN partition, and the internal call phone partition. So you can see clearly how the calling search space ends up defining the privileges for a particular telephony class of service. By the way, 
we also get great examples here of regular expressions, right? Yeah, we're seeing some great examples of regular expressions. Dial a nine, dial the country code, and then some regular expressions to indicate what's gonna happen next. The long distance calls, dial a nine, dial a one, dial the numbers two through nine, dial a number two through nine there, any number, any number, then two through nine, and then any number. So you get the idea. These are regular expressions which are defining the particular destination pattern.